Welcome to whiskey.com where fine spirits meet. My name is Lüning, Horst Lüning. I'm the master taste of whiskey.com and today we have the frequently asked questions number seven. And whenever you like to ask a question, uh, please do so with a hashtag whiskey.com and I will do my very best to answer a few of them. Uh, well, they have grown a lot in the past and uh, whenever I find two similar questions or uh, a question I'm able to answer, well, there are questions I'm not able to answer, um, then I try so and uh, today I have three questions again. And the first is a quite long one. Uh, they found glyphosate in beer here in Central Europe. Uh, what's glyphosate? Glyphosate is a herbicide and is part of the well-known herbicide Roundup from Monsanto. Well, Monsanto, this huge company, uh, well, is seen as the most evil company from, well, a decent part of the population here in Europe because Monsanto does gene tech and uh, has all these herbicides for the crops and well that's not uh, not very popular here so and uh, glyphosate is a chemical substance which blocks the uh, which blocks the metabolism uh, of the plant in its green parts. So it blocks some enzymes and uh, well the plant loses uh, its leaves and it can't no longer grow and uh, the plant will die. Um, so farmers use this glyphosate to keep the well the unwished plants uh, low and in front of uh, seeding uh, they spray the glyphosate these roundup or there's Syngenta a Swiss company and it's called touchdown uh, they spray it uh, on the on the ground and all those green leaves there uh, will die so if you have a, uh, a plantage of apples or hops from the beer production then you put this glyphosate uh, spray it uh, at the stem and uh, then all the green leaves will die and the glyphosate will not act on roots or on the stem. It just acts on green. And uh, there is a way that you can seed uh, your crop together with the glyphosate and then all the unwished plants will die and after three to four days, when the first uh, leaves develop from the corn or from the seed, uh, then the glyphosate is already in the ground and no longer at the plant. And then uh, you can omit the plowing. So this is well, this reduces the energy you need and the CO2. And in in total, uh, it's positive for the yield you you get from such a uh, field. So it's, I do not want to say it's bad or it's good. I just tell you how it works. And uh, in Germany, where the Reinheitsgebot of the beer is very, very present, um, and this Reinheitsgebot says just water, barley, hops and yeast will be in a beer. Uh, there had been uh, an investigation in the 14 most often sold beers and they found the glyphosate in amounts of 30 to 0.5 micrograms per liter. So you need to drink a thousand liters of beer a day so that, that this glyphosate will reach it, uh, well, the legally set limits. So very, very few, the glyphosate. And uh, there are some weird uh, usage of the glyphosate. Uh, there are uh, gene modified crops with gene tech, uh, which do not, are not poisoned by the glyphosate. <clears throat> so that you can spray the glyphosate 
on those uh, genetically modified crops and uh, they will grow and every other uh, unwished plant will die. So it's not allowed in Central Europe, okay. Um, <clears throat> so that there is a small amount of glyphosate uh, in the soil and in the food, um, but uh, it is used to a thing called siccation. Siccation means uh, when the crop has grown fully and is immediately in front of the harvest, then you spray glyphosate on it and it will leave, lose its own leaves and all the power the plant has put it into the fruit or in the corn and the yield from the uh, from the acre from the farmland is 5 to 15 percent higher. It's allowed in Central Europe, it's not allowed in Switzerland. <laughs> so they invented <laughs> the glyphosate uh, in 1950. A company called Silac in Schaffhausen and the patent went 1974 to Monsanto. So the patent has gone in most of the countries so glyphosate is well spread over the world. So what was found in Germany in the beer will also match the complete world. Um, the glyphosate is not soluble in uh, organic uh, solutions, uh, but it's soluble in water. So the glyphosate should not act together with the alcohol in the beer, but with the water. So when you distill the beer to whiskey, finally we are at the whiskey, then the glyphosate should stay with the water and not with the alcohol. And because we increase the alcohol during the water steam distillation, uh, the glyphosate should be relatively less, which results in our whiskey. And the glyphosate has, well, a higher molecular weight than water or alcohol, so it should also stay a little bit behind. But uh, the water is polar and, uh, well, in these steam distillations, uh, substances like the, well, the tasting compounds in the whiskey stick to the water and go over. So, in the end, I have no idea. Uh, I think there's a chance that there will be less glyphosate in the beer, uh, in the whiskey than in the beer. Uh, but the amount in the beer is a thousand fold too less, um, so that I don't think that there is so much glyphosate in whiskey. Somebody will sometime measure the glyphosate content in, in uh, whiskey, but be careful. Um, glyphosate is used more on, on wheat and maize, corn, uh, than on barley. So there's the chance that in bourbon and in uh, and in blended whiskey is more glyphosate than in barley. Yeah, and if you have a genetically modified uh, crops, corn, then the chances is, is higher that you find some glyphosate in it because uh, the farmers have the chance to to spray the growing uh, corn with glyphosate without harming it. Well, uh, the glyphosate is uh, digested or is, comes into our metabolism and then uh, it's uh, dumped via the urine and uh, it does not stay uh, in the body and does not enrich in our body. That's the good. And there is a chance that glyphosate is uh, will uh, start cancer. It's not quite clear if it does or not, but alcohol <laughs> is qualified as producing cancer. <laughs> so if you would uh, like to reduce your chance of cancer, reduce your alcohol intake. <laughs> so glyphosate, this is a storm in a water glass. Uh, well, it was uh, 
the study was uh, done by an NGO which is very uh, aggressive in, in, in Iran environmental issues. Yeah. Um, so this is it with the glyphosate. Uh, sometime somebody will look after the glyphosate in whiskey as well. Uh, but today, well, I think we have the chance that there is less in it than in beer. Uh, but nobody knows exactly what happens during distillation. Second, I found a press release uh, that Lehman Brothers is liquid again. These banking corporation in Manhattan, which went bankrupt during or which, with the bankruptcy of Lehman Brothers, the financial crisis started, and they are liquid again. Mm, well, there is a 34-year-old uh, British uh, named James Green, and he started uh, a whiskey range called Lehman Brothers. <laughs> Marketing, marketing, marketing. And there are three, uh, three bottles. The first one is called Snapfire. A hint of smoke and a handful of spice, the scent of a just-lit Havana, and the end of a day's desperate trading. The second is called oh, Ashes of Disaster. <laughs> uh, with suggestion of burning banknotes. If this James Green has ever burned banknotes, mm, I doubt. <laughs> and the third is called Evergreen, rich as a Lehman broker and full as a bitfold. <laughs> I see this Lehman Brothers whiskey range as a pure marketing gag, and I do not have to taste them. No, <laughs> no, I will not. Uh, they will burn like straw fire <laughs> and then they will be gone by the market. There had been a whiskey on the market which was poured, I'm sorry about this, it, not for me, which is poured over the breasts, the naked breasts of young women uh, to give them an individual touch. So all these marketing is, is is just for bringing popularity, bringing publicity, bad publicity is publicity. And I do not think that I will have a single gram of that. They spend too much money in marketing and probably less money in the product. This is the suggestion. I don't know that. Yeah. Um, the third question was, uh, there are differences in filling levels of bottles. Um, why does that happen? Um, what, uh, whiskey is a mixture of water and alcohol. Well, and a few percent of oils and aldehydes and whatever. Taste compounds. And uh, this alcohol water mixture has a quite high thermal uh, coefficient, means uh, if you change the temperature of the bottle, it will contract or expand. Heat it up, it will expand, uh, cool it down, it will contract. And uh, I one time filled the bottle just to the end of the capsule in normal room temperature. And then I put it out in freezing temperatures overnight. <laughs> Luckily nobody came <laughs> passed by, uh, came by. And uh, the, the level of the whiskey in the morning when it contracted due to the lower temperatures was an inch less. So the level felt a lot. And bringing it back again, it recovered the volume, but it took quite a long time until it reached the up. Per end. So it stayed a little bit below. Um, so the differences between freezing temperatures at 32 Fahrenheit and uh, room temperature 75 to 77, somewhere there, is an inch. 
So whenever you look at those bottles, you bring it in from your car, it is cold from the trunk, then the level will be different. Um, but uh, the, the, the questionnaire, the questioner uh, asked me, uh, I have two identical bottles and they stay alongside each other and they show a different level. What happened to them? Well, uh, we have a production of the glassware and uh, this is a production on a machine and these, this production is very good in, in the repeating but uh, those machines are used for different bottle, bottles. There are forms which are taken for the production of particular bottles, like this one, which has uh, uh, a narrowing here and a engravement in the form here, so that it's uh, the letters stand up. Uh, and then this Ben Romach, the Gordon McPhail company, calls for 100,000 bottles and then the machine will be adapted. Uh, the forms are taken uh, from the storage and put in and then they try and do. And uh, then a bottle comes out and the, the amount of glass, the form is always the same, so the outside is always the same, but the amount of glass filled into the form will not differ from, fill, from one bottle to the next but it will differ from one batch to the next because they look after the weight of the bottle, the final bottle, or they look at the volume of the glass, or the weight of the glass uh, must be the bottle weights around 1.4 kilos, the content weights about 0 0.6, 0 0.65 kilos, so there are 800 grams in between and uh, the specific weight of glass is 2, 2.3, ah, my memory not that good. Um, so there must be 400 milliliters, 0.4 liters of glass, uh, of liquid glass used for the bottle and if there's a little bit more adjusted, you can't fill the bottle in production, it's hot, it has to cool down for hours, so you can't. You can look at the weight or whatever, there are some uh, differences in, some tolerances and therefore uh, the amount of the volume in the bottle will be different and uh, then finally you have the machine filling the whiskey into the bottle and that machine has a tolerance as well. And uh, you have to switch from 0.7 liters for the European market to 0.75 liters for the US market and uh, well there are also some differences and there are some different temperatures in the whiskey. If you're running a bottling over, over days then the temperature will be closer to the room temperature because the big vats from where the bottles are filled uh, will adapt in the temperature. This will lead to different volumes. There is a regulation in the European community which tells for bottles with a volume of 0.5 to 1 liter uh, the accuracy of filling the tolerance is 1 percent. Well 1 percent this is 10 inches high so you have 1 percent is a tenth of an inch. Mm, a little bit. Mm. Okay but the bottle has quite a diameter, some three inches, and here on the top you have just one inch. And uh, the area goes quadratic, so if they're here are three inches, then it's nine times bigger than one inch up here. So from the 2.5 uh, millimeters, a tenth of an inch, uh, you end up ninefold. <laughs> a ninth of uh, nine tenth of an inch. So the the volume differences might be quite big. So one percent <laughs> goes like this. 
and all the temperatures and everything. So there is there are tolerances. There shouldn't be tolerances with two bottles you buy directly from one case. There the tolerances should be quite small. But as soon as you have uh, bottles from two different uh, shippings, two different batches, then there will be some differences. Yeah, that's it for now. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned. And as always, feel free to share this video with your friends. And if you have questions, please do so. Hashtag whiskey come. Thank you.